too hot. <laughs> too hot, baby. You know what? I'm gonna it's put too an alarm hot. On your too finger hot. So that You're going to put an alarm on my finger? Yeah. So when you press too that hot, button, lady. I'll know. It's I'm too hot. It. Too hot. Too hot, lady. Um, hey, BookTube. Um, we had a lot of sugar today. And I'm still waiting for the the sugar crash. Yeah. Zoe's happened about an hour ago. And boy, <laughs> let me tell you what a bitch that's been. <laughs> I'm glad you said that's been. Because <laughs> if I would have said you been, yeah. then we would have had a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not stupid. I can see. Okay. Um... But oh my gosh, guys! So many, so much so to talk about. Um, real quick, um, Black Star Creature, Black Star Book Three is out now. I'll put the link down below because I know you guys all have been reading those books. Um, but I don't know where to start because um, <clears throat> we went on a little day trip today. Um down through Landers and Joshua Tree and Yucca Valley. And um, we went out originally to go to this thrift store in Landers that's kind of by the post office because they were having a fill a bag for a dollar, um, fill a bag of books for a buck. Wow. I like those pads, yo. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to model? No. You sure? Yeah. Fashion show. Fashion show. Fashion show at lunch. Okay. Um, so it was a bag for a dollar. Okay. As much as you could fit in a bag. And you know, I don't know about you guys, but because there wasn't weren't that many people in there, I felt like I could have fit a lot more books into the bags. Yeah. But like, I felt like I was being watched. And I felt like they were, like, seeing if I was just going to stuff the bags. I don't and maybe so. that's ridiculous. I think so. They but it was my enough. first time there, and I wanted to kind of go in on the right foot, you know. So we got five bags. Now, some of you might be thinking, holy crap, Mr. Paperback Junkie, five bags is a crap ton of books. And it is. And I'm going to tell you a couple other things. One, um, I don't even know where to start. There's, if you remember me talking about that Paperback Warrior podcast episode where they were talking about um, how to build your collection, like your book collection, they were talking about, um, oh my gosh, hang on a second. Mother Fudger. What? Look. I told you. I know, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. We'll get back to that at a later date. Fuck, that was ten bucks. Uh, we'll take it back and get a different one. Do you think you'll let me? Yeah. Switch it up. Okay, we'll see. Anyway. Um anyway. There in that video it talks about um or in that podcast, they talk about using books as currency. And what they mean by that is, if you go to one of these things, it's like fill a bag for a dollar, and they have like a bunch of like Tom Clancy and um, John Grisham, and who's that guy? Clive. Cussler, but who's the guy that Bob reads? Oh. oh I can't believe I can't remember. James Patterson. Um, if they have a bunch of stuff like that, those always sell. So just pick those up and then you can take those to your, um, local used bookstore and kind of trade those in as currency for store credit, if that makes sense. So to always just have a box of books in the back of your car that are like your typical bestsellers. So when we first went in, we hit up the, the book case in the back and I'll be honest, I was a little underwhelmed. Yeah, there wasn't much there. There wasn't a lot there. Like for us, like for me. 
So I found a couple books, and I think they're in this bag, actually. This was my first bag. I thought this was all there was going to be. And, in fact, after I took this these books up and the lady put them in a bag, I'm like, all right, um, they're still looking for stuff. I'm going to go sit in my car. And then I watched a bunch of old women cuss each other out in the parking lot, as you do on a Friday. So, um... I'll just show you some of these. And then I went back and I was like, let me at least pick up some books for the book currency thing. Um, and then I'll get to what happened there. So I just saw this and I thought I would give it a, a pickup. It seems more like an editing thing, but it's the writer's FAQs, um, a pocket handbook, the ultimate quick reference guide for writers by Muriel Harris. <clears throat> um, I just opened it up, unnecessary commas, um, commas with dates, um, I don't know, I think I'd have to read this from the beginning because I don't understand the format, but, so that's a book, let me actually move some of this around a little bit, alright, then this is one of those books for... Um, the currency kind of thing. Neil Gaiman, American Gods. Found that. It's not in great shape, but it's not in bad shape. A little paperback. But I saw this. This is the first book I saw that I like picked up. Um, Phantom Lady by William Irish. It's a uh, Dell. Um, it says number 10 of the Dell Great Mystery Library. Um, and the judges on the back here, it's Anthony Boucher, Boris Karloff, and Louis Untermeyer. So that's kind of cool. It shows you all the dudes there. So this one was just uh, a me pickup. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. Put that to one side. And then we have um, all-time bestseller, over 2 million copies sold, Mr. Roberts, the immortal novel by Thomas Hegan. Never heard of this, but it's a old Bantam book, um, the truest, saddest, funniest book ever written about the wartime Navy. That sounds pretty good, actually. That should be fun. Um, <clears throat> and then this was the worst thing, because I saw these sitting there, and I'm like, oh, that's like a set of at least the first three. That's cool. Um, and so when I go up, guess what happens? The woman behind the counter not only had to point out that I got just the first Fifty Shades of Grey book, but then she had to point out that, oh, you got the whole collection. Ooh, that's lucky. Most people don't get um, sequential books like this in a place. Oh, wow, you're going to have a lot of reading there. You know, that E.L. James, that Fifty Sh I'm not reading Fifty Shades of fucking Grey or Fifty Shades Darker or Fifty Shades Free. Um, this is going into the currency box. You know what I'm saying? Ew, that's kind of gross. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, God. <gasps> there is a photograph in the book. What do you want to... <gasps> Were they using it as a bookmark? Oh! Oh! <laughs> I hope that's what that was. I wonder if I should have read what was on that page. I'm not going to mess with you this should've. anymore. Um, <laughs> all right. So that was awkward-ish. Maybe not. Maybe not awkward, just weird. I just didn't want anyone bringing... Okay, look. If you have a bookstore and some dude comes up buying a bunch of the Fifty Shades of Grey books, don't announce it. Don't start a conversation about it. Am I right? I don't know why there's anything to be ashamed of. It's not, it's not shame, but now I feel weird that there was a picture of a human being person 
in the book. She looked a very nice lady. <laughs> yeah, like... Don't say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Very nice lady. Um, speaking of very nice, do you like this, babe? All right. Okay, so I got Ed McBain, Looks The Last like a Dance. Looks a little bit too manicured beard. It is a bit of a manicured beard, I will say that. Now, I kind of want to keep this, but in all honesty, I don't like reading hardcovers. And, oh man, I could read this in like a minute, though. It's very, um, the line spacing's really big. It's a lot of dialogue. Um shit it's an 87th precinct book i might mm, if i could read it like this week there's so much other stuff i want to read though mm, okay last dance at mcbain that's that's going in the maybe pile for right now um all right this is who i thought i was showing you oh no, he looks <clears throat> okay, so I got a bunch of Clive Cussler. So we got Spartan Gold here. Atlas found Atlantis found. But look at how cool that is. Look at that author picture. Yeah, that's There's a good. picture. He's sitting with a fancy car smiling. He's like, dude, I am living the effing life and you jerks are reading my books. That is nice. Ah, and the assassin. Look at how smug he is right there. He knows what's up. He knows the he knows the secrets of life. He has someone like Justin Scott writing his books for him while he's sitting at home in his fancy leather chair drinking his martinis and reading Futurist magazine. Alright. Okay. I wish I was sitting drinking. Wow. It's never enough for you, is it, babe? Nope. You always want more. Okay, so that was bag number one. So after the whole horribly embarrassing me because she thought I was 50 shades smarter, um, I saw a box near my feet that had a bunch of Tom Clancy books. Now these books sell, so this is good stuff to take to the bookstore. So that was um, Without Remorse. This is The Sum of All Fears. I heard of that one, didn't they? Harrison Ford, that one? Yeah. Uh, what's this one? The Teeth of the Tiger. If you want to kick the tiger in his ass, you better have a plan for dealing with his teeth. I'm not sure that's how that works. Uh, Patriot Games. Ooh. And for the most part, these are in pretty good shape. Some of the dust jackets are a bit... bit. Oh, Executive Order. I don't think this has even been read. To be honest, like that looks very nice. And then guess what? Guess what else I got after that um, executive orders? I got another guy. <laughs> oh my god! Two copies of executive orders. Did you? Yeah, but I put them in the bag myself so the lady didn't see because I didn't want her to think I was using the books for currency. Why am I so worried about what people at the thrift store are going to think of me? I don't know. I think she was just <clears> glad you were getting rid of them. I know. She seemed very happy. People were like, thank you for taking the book. <sighs> so, yeah, they then, like, thank you for now that I did this, now that I filled two bags, I'm getting ready to walk out. And she's like, oh, you might want to take a look in the back if you're here for books. Because um, down that little hall right there, past the bathrooms, there's another room, and that's where we're laying all the books out. And I'm like, why the hell are you just now telling me this, right? So I go back there, and it's this giant room that has a kitchen, and you could, like, get little snacks and drinks and stuff, which we did, okay? But um, there were just all these tables with books laid out on them, and the lady back there is like, oh, you should have been here last week. We had, like, four more tables. 
these tables kind of were awesome. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to take you, some of these are Zoe's. So, Zoe's doing her Inktober right now, okay? Late. Late. She's so, out. she's freaking out. She doesn't think she's going to make it. The sun is waning. Am I right? You've done it worse. Or is it waxing? I think it's the moon that walks <sighs> I don't care. Is it the sun's about to set? Zoe doesn't have much time left. So if some of these are hers, she'll talk a little bit about them. First, we have, and these are in really good shape. We have glue by Irvin Welsh. This is a book about egg yolks and glue. Apparently. He's really graphic. Yeah, that's the train spotting dude, right? Yeah. Okay, then we got Understanding Ken by Pete McCormick. Did you pick this one? I don't think so. It's a it's a novel that defines Canadian boyhood in the nineteen seventies. I don't remember picking this up. I don't remember picking it up either. That's what. No. No. Oh, oh. you got a book you didn't mean to get. Yeah. Well, that's okay. It was a dollar. It was a dollar. Um, submersion journalism, reporting in the radical first person from Harper's Magazine. Um, edited by Bill Wask, or Wasick. We'll say Wasick. Um, let's see. There's all sorts of people who are a part of this. Um, I just thought this would be like a really interesting read to be honest um so that's fun then we got elmore leonard stick this is actually a really really good book um this is the sequel to swag if i'm not mistaken um and the copy of this i have is falling apart and completely shit. So this was an awesome little find for this guy here. Whores for Gloria by William T. Volman. Um, lyrical poem of the street. I honestly thought this was something else when I grabbed it. Um, when there's tables of books and you could fill a bag for a dollar... Kind of just grab things? Yeah, like... You went a bit mental. You, yeah, that. like normal thought kind of eludes you at that fact. Um, you know what I thought this was? What? Who has Gloria Kirby? What book is that? <laughs> is that Day Keen now? Was it that Day Keen book? I don't know. I just saw... W and a name, and I thought, who has Gloria Kirby? So, um, this should be good, though. We'll, we'll give it a go. Then Zoe found this for me, and it's a good thing that she's already married, because she would have gotten married again. Because this is on my wish list. What? Raymond Chandler, A Biography, oh. by Tom Henney. Um, I'm so, like, freaking excited to read this. You just um, been saying you wanted a biography. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm so excited. This has been on my wish list forever. Really? Yeah. Since before... You didn't act that excited when you, you were like... Because I was just it. trying to get out. <laughs> Dude, like, seriously, I'm not trying to be weird, but like... There's only so much time you could spend doing what we were doing without completely losing your mind. Like, I had to leave for a little bit. Like, I went outside and waited, thinking it would be over soon. And they pulled me back in. And then, guess what else? Jim Thompson, Sleep with the Devil, a biography of America's greatest noir writer... By Michael J. McCauley. Get the F out of here. Oh, my God. Um, Shay, can you turn that light on above your head? That one? Yeah, so Zoe doesn't go blind trying to draw. Oh, that's much better. You're welcome. Thanks. 
20 years of tracking serial killers for the FBI, whoever fights monsters. What? Is this you? I didn't pick this up. You did. did. I didn't. I didn't pick that up. Yeah. Did you pick this up, Shay? Hmm? I didn't pick anything up. You didn't grab that? No. Uh, I don't know how this got in there. I guess I... Okay. Well, that's okay, because I will read that. Yeah. Um, Arthur C. Clarke, Childhood's End. This book is awesome. This is like my favorite Arthur C. Clarke thingy. Um, it has um, the Overlord in it, which scared me to death as a kid because of Barrow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. I had nightmares of him. Um, if you remember last year, I did some videos about that. Um, but I already have this. I have this exact edition, but I thought this would be cool to put in um, a trade box or something like that. So that's that. Um, now this is awesome because like, this is another one of those writers that you've heard of a bunch, but when you go to like use bookstores, you never find any stuff of his, um, or at least I don't. So this is David Goodis, the burglar from vintage crime. Black Lizard, I believe, is the... Or is this just the Vintage Crime? See, I don't understand the difference between Vintage Crime and Black Lizard. It's probably the same thing, and I'm just getting confused. But this is awesome. It's a nice um, nice paperback. So, stoked on that. <clears throat> now, this book... I don't know how we just heard of this book. But I remember somebody talking about this. Um, Which one? Now, Philip Roth. This is a Philip Roth book. And he used to have those covers done by um, Bacon. What was his name? Francis Bacon. Not Francis Bacon. The, um, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Kevin Bacon <laughs> did his covers. Good freaking God. The guy who did the Jaws cover. Oh. Um, I, don't remember what he's called I can't remember his name, but so all like I remember seeing all of his books with that same kind of just word cover. But anyway, this is American Pastoral, um, and someone was just talking about this book. Was it on BookTube? That looks awesome. Uh I can't remember who was talking about it or where I was hearing about it, but I, I, I don't know if I just read something, but I can't remember. Anyway, so um, I want to give that a once over. One of my favorite books ever, and I do not have this um, copy of it, so I might just read the introduction. It's by Paul Oster, the introduction, um, and this is a translation by Robert Bly of Hunger by Knut Hamsen. Um, I love this book, and I know a lot of people give him shit because later in life um, he was a Nazi sympathizer that got all of his um, money and everything taken away from him, and he died in squalor. Um, but this... This book is so freaking good. Like, this seriously... I read it, and then I put it down, and then within a week I read it again. Like, I just really, really dug it. So, this might go in a trade box, too. Um, now, I have never read anything by this guy, but... Um, a lot of people have told me that they think some of my stuff reminds them of him and that I should read him. Um, so this is Snuff by Chuck Palnick. Palnick. Chuck Palnick. Um, Paula Nick. Chuck Paul. Paul. Oh my god. Paula Nick. How did it spell? Dude, seriously? There's a reason why. There's a, no, that's Brenny Sinellis. Oh. There's a reason why people change their name to, like, Smith or Kane when they got into show business or whatever, you know? 
it's because people can't say your freaking name. So, I know there's people out there that are like, what's the big deal? It's Chuck Palahniuk. Okay. I would just take out some letters and make the Palahniuk a little easier to say. Am I right? Am I right? Um, I picked this up for you. James Joyce Dubliners. I don't know. Would you want to read that? Possibly. I think I already have it. Oh, okay. So, so I might already have this. I think our copy might be really crap, though, so... So, this is Ernest Hemingway, The Garden of Eden. Um, it's just a really nice paperback copy of it. And, finally... Um, Waiting for Godot, a tragic comedy in two acts by Samuel Beckett. Um, I think I picked this up for you. Yeah? Is that something you're interested in? Uh, possibly, because I've got so much other stuff. I know. But anyway, so here's the thing. All the books I've shown you so far, like all gajillion I, that, I've only spent $3 so far. Okay? I know. <gasps> only two more bags, guys. <laughs> um, the Human Strain by Philip Roth. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. There was a point where I just think we just started grabbing stuff off tables. Yeah. So, let's see what we got here. The Little Friend by Donna Tart. Yeah, that's me. This is you? Okay. Donna Tart did the uh, Goldfinch that everyone keeps talking about, and I've got it on my Audible wish list. Is she alive right now? I believe so. Why does this picture of her on the back look like she's some weird refugee from the 20s? I don't know. But I would quite like to... See what it's like. Okay. And then this is Rainbow Stories by William Ballman. Um, is this one that you said had William S. Burroughs or like felt like that? Um, for from a writer who has one comparison with Thomas Pynchon and William S. Burroughs comes thirteen unnerving and often breathtaking stories populated by punks and angels, skinheads and religious assassins, streetwalkers and fetishists, people who live outside the law, and clear the light of every day. This sounds solid. Solid? We will say. You're not sure? No, I just, well, I just said it sounded solid. Why would no, it? No, but that's like a funny word for you to use. Well, it's... E.M. Forster, A Room with a View, Howard's End, and Maurice. That's mine. So, A Room with a View of Howard's End. That is <laughs> kind of gross. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got, I'm not laughing at my jokes. They're not that funny. They're not. You don't need to fucking say that kind of stuff. You don't need to agree with that. Okay, okay this is... um. The Verificationist by Donald Antrim. There's some there's some puppies on this cover, so I'm guessing this what? is a Zoe pickup. Let me see. Yes. Yes. What? What do we got here? Cormac McCarthy, Blood Meridian. Um, I believe. That's mine. I really want to read that. I've been wanting to read Blood Meridian forever. All right. Well, there you go. Hmm. Someone told me the other day that I needed to, that I would really like it. Oh, um, and then we saw this. This was funny because I started singing. Um, we found a copy of a book we never had heard of before two days ago. The Monkey Wrench Gang. And it says, Excellent High Adventure. And that's from Playboy. So you know, they know all about High Adventure. So I'll put this one in a uh, trade box. Yeah, people will love it. All right. 
and then so we found this and I got all excited. Um, it's not the best looking on the front. It looks like it's seen some wear and it's got some tape on the spine. But Zoe found this awesome collection of the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov. And it has those original um, Foundation covers. Like on the thing like that. Oh, that is so cool. So anyway. Um, oh. That is nice. So anyway, so that's super cool. Zoe found that for me, and I got all excited. Um, Time and Again by Jack Finney, an illustrated novel. This is one Zoe picked up, I think, just to fill a bag. Or were you actually... Mm -mm. I, d I, I, I don't know. Bop the bop the bop! <laughs> I quite like the sound of the, the back of it, but I don't know whether I'll get around to it or not. It says an illustrated novel, and I've seen like two pictures. No, so, read it. it I don't like know if they know what an illustrated novel is. Um, it says a gem. Yeah. Most ingenious. Mind boggling. Hmm. There you go. Oh, third edition Light and Shadows, the history of motion pictures. Look at this chunker. This was probably someone had to get this for school. This is like a textbook. It's awesome. Yeah, and there's a bunch of stuff underlined. Yeah, this is super cool. Oh, yeah, this is a textbook for, for realsies. So that's cool. Isn't it cool? Yeah. And then White Jazz by James Elroy. Hardcover. Deckled edges. Oh, my gosh. Um... So, <clears throat> that is cool. Now, um, we still have another bag. What? I know. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. We've only spent $4 so far. And they didn't charge me $0.10 cents for each bag. Can you believe it? <sighs> Not everyone speak at once. It's fine. Oh, were you talking to us? I don't care who I was talking to. As soon as you come down up this sugar thing. Spike back. Mike Slackers and Dykes by John Pearson. Whoa. A guided tour across a decade of American independent cinema. This is going to be a read. I'm excited about that. The Prophet by Cahill Gibran. Um... I actually have this exact copy. So this is um, store currency fodder. James Elroy, Hollywood Nocturnes. Babe. That's scary. It looks like Anthony Hopkins, doesn't he? A young Anthony Hopkins. Zoe Zinktober. She's doing an Anthony Hopkins thing. I won't tell you what. Um, we got another Jim Thompson. The Grifters. Look at that. These are great paperbacks. They feel good in your hand. Vintage crime. Okay. Saw this. Las Vegas. Little Black Book. A Guy's Guide to the Perfect Vegas Weekend. Hmm. Maybe I should have thought about that a little bit. This is a travel book. Mm. I thought this was... Um, like a crime novel. Not like a pervy thing for all the uh, strip clubs. <laughs> Which is what it sounds like to me. What it sounds like to me! <laughs> uh, wow. Does that the Pinball Hall of Fame in there? No, which is weird, because you yeah. think that'd be the first thing in here. Exactly. No. Jesus Just has a bunch of ranches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Bunny Ranch, Chicken Ranch. Um, so I'll keep that. I'll keep it quiet. The Hitchcock Reader. I heard what you were saying. About what did I say? Something about a chicken ranch and a bunny ranch. Yeah, whatever. Sounds built. To me. Um, Dostoevsky. 
Kowalski's A Name I Can Never Say, Last Night, a novel by Christina Pirarazzi. I thought this was a Dostoevsky book. So paint me stupid. Um, if you guys know anything about this book, tell me if it's worth the read. It's translated by Laura C. Dial. <sighs> then I got Mark Hughes' Buzz Marketing. Get people to talk about your stuff. Wow, that's coming um, handy. I would think, but this might be horribly dated. Yeah. Because Buzz Marketing changes every five minutes. And don't I know it. Um... Ken Kessie's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a really nice what? penguin of it, oh which is awesome because our copy of this book is a Sucks. piece of crap. Like, it's gorgeous. Like, it's a gorgeous I'm first read edition. That. Yeah, but. Can the, I have that on my yeah. cart? Do you want it over there right now? Yeah, pass it up, please. Okay. okay. Yeah, Thank our you. copy of that is kind of shit. Oh, but I got now? a J.G. Ballard. Vermilion Sands and Robert A. Heinlein, um, Starman Jones. So those are pretty cool. Um, stooped. Is that all the bags? Because I thought there was a. There's a five bags. This is the fifth bag. Oh. Um, Shampoo Planet by Douglas Copeland, a new novel by the author of Generation X. Did you pick this? Okay, this was, uh, we were filling up a bag. Um, if that's any good, let me know. Hong Kong Babylon, baby. An insider's guide to the Hollywood of the East. You're such a loser. <laughs> oh my God, what a stupid guy. Oh man. Uh. Why are you guys whispering? I hate when you whisper. I'm whispering about my book. Ah, guess I'm not too stupid after all. Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and a Barnes and Noble classic. What kind of voice am I doing? What is that? You just get into it. You just get into it. What are you? We're talking about it. We're talking about it Do by video. Stephen King. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So five dollars. Hang on a minute. And all them books, five bags. That was not all of them. We left a couple of bags in there, didn't we? One bag, two bag, three bag, four bag, five bag. There was a Dollar Tree bag for a start. We left a couple of bags in there. In the store? Yeah. Where? What are you talking about? Because there was a bag full of. My, a little house on the prairie I put in, and all sorts of other stuff. Then I didn't know about it, and I didn't pay for it. I told the chick we had five bags. You said five bags when we were at the front. Where did you put them, Zoe? Just Why don't you message them? They have that Facebook page. Say, hey, I left a bag of one of the books. Damn Just it. go back. That's message them and tell them. Right, guys? Somebody might have picked it. I don't think they will have done it. Message them. I and will. find out. Okay, so I'm going to do the other bag of um, secret stuff in an upcoming video. I'll tell you what it is right now. We actually found a bookstore that has a bunch of cool crap that we like in Joshua Tree. The bookstore is called Space Cowboy. And it's freaking awesome. They had a bunch of dollar westerns outside. And then you go inside, and it's just like a ton of sci-fi. A ton of vintage paperbacks. A ton of paperbacks. Should it, did you take any video of it? No. Mm -hmm. A ton of bagged books, like, tacked up onto the wall and stuff. They had a bunch of zines and stuff in there. I'm going to hit them up and see if I could um, leave some of my zines in there. But anyway... Um, it was super cool. So I'm going to do a, a video on um, Space Cowboy in um, an upcoming video this week. So um, take care, everybody. Um, let me know down below if any of these are worth keeping, if it sounded like I was getting rid of them, um, and what you think about them. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.